It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is, of course, uh, the 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock show, and it's uh, fresh. I'm live. <laughs> this is not pre-recorded from this morning. Live. In fact, there's a lot that's happened since this morning, and we'll go through that right away. Won't waste any time. Most importantly, what I'd like to look at here is that the Dow is down 90. There, there were signs early on during my show that I, I spoke about where I could see that buying kept coming into support, but it couldn't support the rallies. But that's so interesting because on the way down, you're still seeing some buying. The shorts have not yet in the Dow been able to kick in. The S&P is down, so the Dow is down 86 at uh, 0.59%. The S&P is down almost double at 0.92 at minus 14.38. The last hour, this last hour is going to be so important, I'll explain a number of different things. I've also asked in the den, you know, we've got this fabulous medium here, we've got the den, so what, yeah, a whole bunch of uh, uh, traders in there, um, and I said, uh, if you want, we'll also have a bit of a lightning round a little later on in the show. So we've got a question about American Express. Great. I'll be back, uh, uh, sat and look at that. Um, but most, most importantly, these are the factors that are absolutely critical. What I'd say to subscribers is we are really close. I see just enough strength to maybe keep the, the market buoyed just a little longer. And what's so fascinating about this in going by... I love my black background charts, and I had a, an email from um, from one of us subscribers talking about it. And I, you know, it just shows up so nicely. Let me just do this here. Click there it goes. And even more important that it shows up, it gives you a sense of um, background and foreground. And I can also put the. Um, whoops, I didn't want to do that. So let me go back to this. There it is. Uh, and, and it gives you a sense of perspective. The white background is great for printing and all that. So let me just explain what I'm looking at here. 877-927-6648 is the number to call. Love to take your calls. Fresh. Remember, this is live. Call in, call in, call in. But what I'm looking at is the Dow's at 89. In the black charts, you see, see how beautifully it shows up. Look at that. You see that white line there? That is the nine-period exponential moving average. Look all the way from the breakout back in uh that was that was that the January yeah the January the second breakout even in that consolidation that I call the Stalkleg formation only twice did the Dow break underneath the nine EMA so out of let's call it let's call it about 62 sessions you've only had two sessions no let's call it three right on there i'll call it three three sessions where the dow is closed below the nine ema Therefore, we've got to anticipate at this particular point with the MACD. Now, look how beautifully it shows up on these charts. You see the yellow lines under the red line for the, um, for the MACD and the slow stochastic right here. You see the little turnaround? But the fast-moving average is slipping, but the slow-moving average is still at 86%. And that's the reason why I just... I held back. I was so I I even put it into my newsletter, the DXD, which is two hundred percent short. To, I was just about to say let's let's start a small position, but I wanted to keep my head as clear as possible. And here's what I'm thinking. And I, I could still do that tomorrow. I don't update during the day sometimes. Just really, really, really do I do. But the MACD and stochastic are pointing down. Although the stochastic still at eighty six percent. You see that yellow line there. And what I'm anticipating, if this is going to be leg F, that's F and in Frank, A to B to C to D to E, F with a parallel wave count of maybe B, we will see a close below the 9 EMA and a lousy candle follows tomorrow. And it certainly could happen. Absolutely it could happen. My thinking was that as long as the price was holding, we could recycle and maybe squeak to another 
higher high for maybe leg C and then a D. But I don't want to fight a trend. And the trend says that the moment it starts, the nine-period moving average begins to take on water and it makes re it turns into resistance. You've got to be careful for the downside. Now, there's tremendous support at 14,150 to 14,000, right in there, that whole area. Tremendous support. So now let's go back to the, to, to the time frames that I love to look at. In this particular chart, let me see, I've just expanded. I'm going to look at it as you would be seeing it. Yeah. This shows that the MACD, the fast moving average of the MACD, is still very, very strong. And the stochastic's at 98%. Normally, when you get to 98%, you can see over here, it lasts for quite a while. And then you get a very choppy action and reaction. And that's the action and reaction that I'm anticipating we could be seeing right here, which makes 14,299. It's called a 14,290s in the weekly chart. Very, very important support. But wait a minute. I love to look at time frames. And next week, a week, in fact, in another three, in less than three hours' time, next Wednesday, between 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock, I'll be giving a presentation and a workshop where 3,000 miles away. I'll be doing it in San Francisco. I'm really looking forward to that. And that uh, will be, uh, let's see, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. There it is. Go to the front page of TFNN. Look right there, TFNN. You go to the front page of TFNN. There it is, San Fran Free Live Workshop, Basil Chapman, two-hour live workshop. Conducting a free live workshop up three times. The tide of the market. I'm going to talk about the tide. I'm going to talk about how these different moving averages can give you so much information. Why I still have to be positive based on my weekly and monthly charts. Looking out. But that's not to say short term. We can't get a really choppy, whippy action. That's number one. Number two is um, I, I would love it. Go to the front page and click on this and learn more because we really need you to sign up. I. I there's, a, there's a, a huge convention going on. Uh, my wife is actually going to the convention. And I was very, I, I, I really was very fortunate and able to find even a little tiny space. I, in fact, it turns out to be a nice room that I've, that I've got in the ballroom, the, uh, in the ballroom of uh, the Marriott Marquis, San Francisco, on 50, uh, what is it, uh, fourth, 55 4th, Street, I think it is. Well, the, all the information is right there. So I need to be able to tell them that they've been like they've been really accommodating enough to to find me a place, and um, I need to just give them the numbers of the people that will be there. So please let us know. Uh, sign up, tell, let us so we can we can find out and I can give them that information. So it'll be a week from tonight, and I'm really looking forward. So now let's go back to our story, and. This is the reason why in the monthly chart I still have to be really positive. Because that nine period moving average is at 13,785. It is getting a little extended above it, but that's not extended, it's not a big deal. It can continue being extended. But it's the MACD that is still moving average convergence divergence. Look at the chart, you can see how nice that is. Look how it's holding up. Look how the histogram, these little green bars right here, are still very positive. Look how the stochastic is at 94%. Now, there's one clue that says, no, there are actually two clues that says, be careful because we are getting close to some kind of a pullback in the monthly chart, which says that means you've got to refer back to that weekly chart. And the reason is that my unbalanced volume, the green line, and the relative strength are starting to show signs that say, hey, be careful. It doesn't mean to say you can't go higher. In fact, look, when, when, when the... Not my unbalanced volume, but when the relative strength was giving all these signals back in 2008, way back, it was way too early. It was in July, June, July, August. And then all of a sudden what happens is in October you pull back. So sometimes they can be early. But I always prefer to be a little early than to be a little late. In this case, I am preferring to be a little late than to be early for the uh to go to the short side because i needed to see what happened today and since my service is only once a day uh, we did miss out on a very nice entry but you know what if by the close i assess that we we have 
quite a bit more points to the downside. I will certainly go there. So now let's go through this. Um, we've got the Dow down 94 now. You see, this is very, this is the 320 area. Between 310, 305 on a day like this to 320, you start to get the signs to say, uh-oh, the, the, the bulls have given every attempt and they're about to throw in the towel and the, the shorts are about to put in the squeeze. Or if there's signs of strength, the bulls can suddenly turn around. I think they used that, that, that energy up earlier on by going from 109 down in the Dow. It was actually the, the S&P was down about 18 or more to that counter trend rally. So we're going to watch this real closely. And then I'm going to talk about certain indicators that are extremely important. So here we go. The Dow is down 97 at 14.563. The, car, the S&P is now, this is so fascinating to me. Now the S&P's come back a little bit more. The Dow is down deeper. The S&P is down only 14.33 at 15.55. And I didn't mean to say only. I mean less than it was. The comp index is down 35 at 32.90. Now Apple is up three. You, do you understand how you can't always rely on one particular index or indicator or stock? Things happen in the market that unfold in waves, and each one gets a turn to be the precursor. In this case, the IWM really was the precursor to this, the IYT, the transports, and the Russell 2000. So let's finish the numbers here. You've got gold down 90. Oh, man, you know, I just keep talking about gold. I see nothing there, and I've seen nothing there for months. So gold is at 1556. Now, here's the question. Would you own the S&P at 1555, or would you own gold at 1555? I know what I'd answer. In a split second, I'd say I'd own the S&P at 15 5, 1555 and not gold. In fact, it was a question I was going to ask. I don't know if I did. When the SPY was at 155 or 156 the other day, the GLD wasn't the other day. It was a little while ago. Was it about 156? And I, I think I asked the question, or at least I, once I wrote it down to ask the question, which one would you own? And the point was at that time that I would own the, the, the SPY and definitely not the, the GLD. I still feel that way, and I, hope, I, I think I'm going to feel that way for a while. Now, let's go back to this. April has just started, so in some of the indexes like the S&P, we've made a peak E already because in the, in the daily, but in some of, these, in some of the cases... There was no new high in April. So you've already made a peak in the weekly charts, but you haven't made it in the, um, in the S&P or the Dow because they both made new recovery highs. So you've got silver down 31 cents at 26.90. You've got platinum down sharply at 50.37. High-grade copper down 5 at 3.32. Uh, crude oil is down and bonds are up one point and dollar is down 23.30 seconds. I'll be back. We'll start taking calls. We'll do a lightning round as well. We'll start off with AXP when I get back. Basil Chapman, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock before Tom Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable moderated atmosphere hear all of your favorite tfnn shows plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts you can test drive the tiger's den absolutely free for 30 days it will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets details on the tiger's den are on the front page of tfnn.com with the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Just I'm squinting here to see. Let me see. I've gone back to the white charts. I've already got this no day 67, 75, 76. Oh, man. Okay. So we are looking at a Dow that's down 102 points. S&P is down 16 and um, this is one of the uglier days that we've seen. And this is so fascinating in terms of candles. Just one quick look here. Let me just show you. This is what I show my subscribers every day. In fact, this was the uh, call for today. I discussed how the IWM, the Russell 2000, is lagging very badly. And that the cyclical goods and cyclical services areas are, are, are really close to turning it down. Even the biotechs and the pharmaceuticals. And look at the candles. I just discussed the number of candles on the upside. But even if you just take it from the uh, February um, uh, breakout from the 25th, look at the number of black candles to the white candles in this particular background. And you'll see very few. And in fact, the black candles have been pretty heavy. And then all of a sudden, the market bounces back because the nine-period moving average acts as fantastic support. That is going to be key right now. So let's go to the first question. Now we've got a little lightning round going on here. Oh, boy, I've got a whole bunch of things, uh, uh, IMs and uh, also uh, questions about stocks. So we've got one Denner who's just, what a fabulous thing, uh, sat in the den, S-A-T. I uh, said, Basil, AXP, please. That's American Express went short with a put option. Wow! Look at this. AXP American Express trading at sixty six twenty nine down one point three five right now. Look at this. Now I, I'm going to be talking just very briefly when I give the talk next week, uh, uh, Wednesday evening, 
at the uh, Marriott Marquis in San Francisco in the in the ballroom, uh, just off the ballroom in the room there. Um, I'm going to be giving a presentation, a workshop. I'm going to talk something, somewhat about the different, the notation and that sort of thing. I don't want to make it too complicated there. We just, you know, this is a meeting. I want to meet you. I want to talk with you. I'm going to show some charts. So I'm going to do that right now because this is very important. And if you're looking at the charts in the Chapman Wave, what you want to do is to go to, from a buy signal, to at least a peak D, four peaks higher. It's just as simple as it is. You won't see it as clearly as you would on the black background charts, will you? Yeah, it's okay. Um, from the last low bar of 58.70 on the 20th of January, you in peak A, B, C. This is a pattern that I call the, Cha the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle because it breaks right out. It, oh, I actually made a little, oh, sorry, this is not. This is the, the handle. There's a little handle which says you can go to D. Be careful, you, you're going to come back, and you come back into the body. The cup and ladle is the one that powers right through to a D or an E, and it just it really takes out the left side lip in a decisive cup formation right through. So in this case, it goes to D and pulls back. So it's a brand-new buy mode. And that saw us on the at sixty one fourteen on the twenty first of Feb. He goes A B C D. Well, at D, the MACD, this is the thing I see the MACD twelve twenty six nine green red dark gray. That MACD holds; it doesn't break down. So I can only put a plus sign there. Stochastic holds beautifully, and then what does it do? American Express goes continues higher and higher and higher until yesterday it hits sixty seven seventy six. That is leg E. And all of a sudden, you get this ugly candle that goes under the under the black line, which is the nine period moving average. For only, it's going to close under there for sure, and that'll be for the first time that it closes under there since even that was on the line since about the twenty first of February. I mean, if you use certain technical tools, they can be fantastic. So now, the MACD is crossed negative for the first time because look, when it was at that level. Uh, at 6643 on the 15th of March, the MACD was, the fast moving average was a little lower and went a little higher, but the fast moving average was way lower. There's a divergence because this represents the price movement. But the price went higher. Beautiful doji candle. This is what I call in my, in my, in my uh, webinar on um, uh, techniques. Um, there's a technique that I call a silence. I had a whole whole webinar that I based on different uh, techniques, and one I call the silent, uh, the silent candle. I've spoken about this for years about certain round numbers um, that you don't always see. They're kind of hidden. Well, look at this. You get a Doji candle. The very next day, you get your uh, 6776, and today you've got 6769. Just seven cents below. And yes, that ugly candle. So fantastic. Congratulations, Sat. That was a great, great trade. And now you want to know where will it go? I if you've got do you have an April? I suspect you've got an April. If you've got an April position, there's a really good chance that the hundred and twenty minute chart is telling you that the level to watch on the downside will be sixty five eighty two, sixty five twenty five. But my guess is that sixty 64.90 to 64.70 is really going to be the big issue. If that breaks down, my target for American Express in the shorter term would be 63.58. All right, we've got a loud new round. Lightning round first one's gone. We've got a couple of others coming up. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman, 3 to 4 o'clock hour. Tiger Technician's hour. Repeat at Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. 
don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks, and uh, this is Basil Trapp of the four to, uh, 3 to 4 o'clock hour I'm doing here. Don't forget, Tom O'Brien comes up, and it should be a great show with Tom this afternoon. Uh, just be nailing these turns, so uh, I advise you to turn in, to tune in. And um, let's look at the market. So that was the trade on American Express. Did I finish that, or did I just continue? Uh... Yeah, so the first level will be the 65-ish area. But the 120-minute chart is suggesting that it's going to go all the way back to 64.81, 64.80, the low of the 19th. That's going to be the big test. However, sometimes speed is involved in these turns to the downside. And what happens is coming off the top, three things can happen. One is it could just be a slow rollover making a big arch formation, and it's just quietly you start to make lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, number one. Number two, it could be a very severe decline, and that decline actually precipitates like, a, like an avalanche, just a, a, a huge number of cells all over the shows. People say, hey, we've made our year. Why are we messing around? Let's just get out of here. That's, that's, that could happen right now. But the other one, and we've seen that before, and I think they've kind of used them up, is the candle that I was looking at in the Dow, where you get this massive capitulation uh, like you had 
at the low of uh, what well, no, the high and the low in the, in the same day on the 25th of February 14,081 in the Dow was a high 13,784 and that's done or it had those ugly candles uh, back on the uh, uh, 21st of March and then again the 25th of March this is a little different because I've got a potential peak F and a peak F in the Chapman wave is never anything that you should dismiss lightly. Well, I certainly don't. That's number one. Number two is, I, for the first time, I'm not seeing the Chun index skyrocketing. It's like disbelief. It's only at $1.71. It should be up at two thirty or two fifty. So that says to me there's room to go on the downside. That's number one. Number two is the volatility index. This is what I give my subscribers every day. I, I give them the five quadrants. Five quadrants. So we look at the first one on the left. That's the Dow, 120-minute chart. It made a rising wedge formation, peak E at 14.684. Now it's pulling back, and it should go into the Roman candle with a low of 14,439. And that, that low will be tested if it gets anywhere into halfway through the wick, somewhere between 14,480. And right now it's at 14,532, down a, a do, 130 points, and the S&P is down 19. Now, this is going to be very important. Why? Because the volatility index, now let me go to the black chart because it shows up so much better there. The, the uh, questions I've got, I'm, I'm going to get to more questions. So we, I can't call it a, a lightning round. It'll just be a round because I'm not spending a short amount of time on all these different things. I think it's very important. This is a very critical day. And it's a very critical day because of the fact that I might be getting that F in the, uh, I did get it. Almost certainly, it looks like I got it in the E minis. Let me just do this for one second, if you don't mind. I just want to—I I want to be talking about apples to apples. So ESM thirteen, yeah. There's that peak F fifteen sixty eight was the round number high, and it looks like it wants to get into the body. This candle right here could even get to the fifteen twenty nine area. Uh, yeah, that's that's another two hundred Dow points. So let's go back to the to the to the volatility index. The volatility index shows that if, let me just first of all, for those of you who are new to my work, this is the volatility index on a monthly basis, and it's with the Chapman wave. And the object of the Chapman wave is always to identify the peaks and get to a D. And at D, you've got to be a bit careful. Sometimes in the volatility index, it only goes to an A or a B, and then it fails. But... That's not the point. The point is that when it gets to the D, the D often skyrockets. It just as it did in the bank crisis of uh, of 2008, and it went all the way to 89.53. Um, that was October of 2008. 89.53 in leg D, then peak D. Now what we're looking at is this whole area underneath the the, the nine period exponential moving average, which is at about 15.80. We're we're down there. And what we're looking at is, there's a good candle so far with three days into uh, April at 14.49, and the stochastic is starting to rise, but the MACD hasn't shown anything yet. So we're going to be watching that closely. That's the monthly chart. Now, if you look at the weekly chart, let me just grab it. I want to see if you can see it the way I can see it. Yeah. Monthly chart went down to nine, uh, 11.05. Let me just type that in here. 11.05. 11.05 is at not the low because we've been we've been lower than that before. We've been down into the uh, nines back in 2006, 2007. Yep, there it is, 9.39. But it's towards the lower end. That's number one. Number two is that it's just trying desperately with the stochastic rounding and the MACD starting to turn up, is trying to push higher so that by Friday, if Friday, it's two sessions to go, if on Friday at 4 o'clock, the volatility index, that is the, the, a measure, I, I call it the measure of, of buying or selling. That's, to me, that's the simplest way of thinking of it. It is intense buying when it is down in the very low teens to the levels that it's been at recently, 12. That's why we're going to new highs in the different uh, key indexes. And it starts the selling on a shorter term basis if it goes above 15.89, the nine period exponential moving average. If it holds there, if it holds at about 15.80 by tomorrow, because it's another terrible day, because overnight 
or the other markets start to tank and that just filters a domino effect to us, then what you'd be looking at is the candle of the 25th of February at 19.28, that whole area between 18 and 19 is going to be key. I suspect that if we're going to get a sell-off of consequence, meaning uh, five to nine sessions or more, I'm just saying that at least five to nine sessions, in other words, to make a weekly peak, you're going to see that volatility index start to climb. If the volatility index suddenly turns down again, back into the low 14s, 13s, ah, buying it comes back. Just make it as simple as possible. So I wanted to talk about the volatility index, and then the next question was Netflix. Let's go back to the white charts because they're all notated nicely. Netflix, NFLX. Netflix is trading at 169 down minus 7. Now, this is going to be very interesting for me because there were three double tops, well, three attempts at a top. The first one was at 197.62 on the, this is the weekly chart. This is the left side, it's the daily, this is the weekly, and that's the monthly. So the, the 197.62 uh, was on the 22nd of February, the week of the 22nd. The week of the 15th saw a high of 195.19, and then last week, 197.06. When you get those three bumps to the top and they can't take it out, You've got to be careful because the support, if the support goes, it says be careful because the candle of most importance to the downside will become the target or a gap. So now let's look at it this way. Are there any gaps? You bet. There's a gap between 139.62 and 103.62. Does that mean it has to be filled in right now? Now look at this chart here. I'm going to do this. It's called a rectangle formation. That rectangle formation says... If selling intensifies tomorrow, then the level to watch would be 158.63. If it breaks that, then you're going to start to get a left side, right side price tie match. And that says, be careful in Netflix because the low of 139.62, the gap up low bar of the 24th of January, that is going to be key. And I suspect in this move down that Netflix only touches the gap. It doesn't fill the gap. It touches the gap and then it comes back again. Why? I think there's still money managers. There are fund managers that have not bought in or they want to add to the position. Later, I can see a deeper decline. But right now, I would say that Netflix is on the short term vulnerable. Um, it is vulnerable if it takes out. It's at 169.14 with a low of 164.26 today. If it closes under 160, then immediately 156.63 to 154.80 would become a target on the downside. If it holds nicely, look what it could do. And that's why I, something tells me about this market that, you know, I could just be right off the wall with this. And it's certainly I, I, tonight I'll do my homework and I have no compulsion about going short. With, with a fairly tight stop. Something tells me that, I don't know what it is. I'm looking at so many different things, but something tells me that there's in, internal strength that has not yet been fulfilled completely. But uh, the most important thing is you've got to trade what you see. And if you're looking at positions that are potential shorts, don't be afraid to go short. Just put in a tight buy stop. And that's the way it is. I'm just a little hesitant at looking at long positions right now because I think we're looking for uh, that overflow into the evening session and then the follow-through into the morning session. That's all I'm saying. So um, so now what we need to look at is, um, well, let me see. Was there a question here? Oh, another question was, this is a great stock. I was asked about um, asked about WDC. WDC has held so beautifully. Look at this. This is Western Digital. Now, who would have thought under all these conditions, high tech, you've got Zynga, Z Zillow, and Zynga, and Zipper, and you've got all these fancy things. And along comes the old tech, Western Digital. Boring. Western Digital. Going from $9.48 after a round number, all time, uh, round number, it was an all-time high back in 2008, of 40 
It goes down to 9.48, let's call it 10. And it goes from that level to the doji candle in the monthly that we're seeing right now of $51.44, trading right now at 50.43. I would call that a five-fold increase in a boring area. It is still looking good, although it's leg D, the MACD is strong, the stochastic strong. And look at the doji candle that we're looking at right now. This doji candle in the weekly says... MACD strong, stochastic strong, although it's dipping down a little bit. So the level to watch is the 4836 level of the nine period exponential moving average support. But most importantly, there are so many charts that have made this left shoulder, the head, possibly a right shoulder, and then it could come down. So I'm watching this really closely for the pattern that might form later. Right now, it's got a leg A. Uh, sorry, it should have been E slash B, not A. E slash B in the daily. And if you're long, I'm going to make a suggestion to think about it. Uh, what was the question uh, in the den was OV? If, if you are long, I'm just going to make the suggestion that I'm going to put it. I have no choice but to put the down arrow, even though the MACD recovered very quickly. I'm putting a plus sign here. And what I would say to you is if it takes out... In the next two days, because it's acting brilliantly today, uh, it's only it's up 43 cents at 50.50, .50, having made an all-time high. If it takes out 49 dollars, if it closes under 49, I would advise taking. If you've been long all this time, I'd take something off right at that moment. Even now, I'd say, you know, um, tighten your stop on some, not the whole thing. It looks fabulous so on some part of the position. Tighten your stop. But there's that rectangle. Since it's in, it could be going to, into a trading range between 44 and a half and maybe slightly new highs. But right now it's acting extremely well. Next question was IWM. IWM has really taken it on the chip. It went right through this morning when I was talking. It was on the 50 period exponential moving average. Now this is going to be very, very interesting. We've seen how Apple at times was very influential in the queues. And then at other times, Apple would be up, the queues would be down, or the queues would be down, Apple would be up. So there were moments when there was absolutely a correlation. And then there were moments when you say, what, like Apple is doing, I mean, what's this? Apple is up three at 4.32, and the market, and the queues are down. So there are times when you're going to divorce, divorce yourself from, from um, certain stock indicators if you use them as indicators or even indicators but most importantly look at this pattern the MACD is just turned down in the, in the weekly chart of the uh, IWM the stochastic when it went to peak B at uh, on the 20 week of the 22nd of February at 9268 that D everything was very strong when it went to peak C the on balance volume didn't confirm the MACD did and the stochastic was lower, and the, and the relative strength went to a new high. And then all of a sudden, you get this pullback underneath the, the two channel lines that I'm drawing. It's actually not quite channel lines now. It should be expanding a little bit. But in the meantime, what we're looking at is that there should be a leg D to come. The candle that I'd be looking at, put the most importance in, is the candle of the 1st of March. High was 91.53. We're just a little under that. Low is 88.79, and the monthly chart is still very positive in P uh, making a peak see if there's no new high in April. Level to watch is if it holds 88.79, what, 90? 89.50 to 87. I'd give it a little bit of room to 88.50. If it can hold that over the next two days, it's going to make a rectangle formation, try to bounce back, and then we'll see if it makes lower lows. So IWM is vulnerable here. It was the lead, lead turn downer. And we'll be back straight off this message. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely 
completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Tom O'Brien. Brian's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Hi folks, Basil Chapman. Let me just go through this. I, I, I did this before in the last break and I completely forgot about it because in the breaks I used to do so many different charts. Um, this is the black chart. I think you can see it a little bit clearer. In the IWM, I was asked about this uh, email, and also just uh, in the den, I was asked about it. So I'm going through this. Uh, and what's what's kind of important as far as what I'm looking at is in the uh, – I'm just trying to go back to see exactly who it was. I can't remember anymore. All right, Justin, Matt, we, we had the IWM, and it made – I don't want to make it complicated – peak C1 and peak C2 in, in the Chapman Wave uh, at the top. Uh, with uh, 94, 96 was the top of the 15th. Well, what's happened, there was a gap. The gap between the high of the 4th of March at 91.17 and then the low of 91.60. If you do a left side, right side price time match, what it does is it goes to tomorrow and we've already filled the gap. So the objective for me, gaps become really important, like candles, they become really important at a certain point. Otherwise, I just ignore them. Well, this was the point. This is very important. If, in fact, the IWM tomorrow starts to tackle the candle of the 4th of um, March, 
that had a high of 91.17 with a low of 90.22, then you can expect an entire give back of the rally from the doji candle low of the 26th of February. In the meantime, the 120-minute chart, if I can now go back to the white charts, if you don't mind, here we are, has hit the 200-period exponential moving average and gone just a little lower, and that becomes a magnet. That says in the shorter term, unless it's just a really horrible opening tomorrow, there could be a bounce, but the, I have to call it a bounce, to 92.17. Between 92.17 and 92, 92.50 or even 92.70, that's going to be the big test if there is, because the stochastic and the 120-minute chart char is at the bottom, flattening out. The MACD still has a lot of work to do, as well as the histogram, the red lines there. And most importantly is that the MACD and the stochastic and the daily are still, they need time. They don't, they don't say that you have to go down much more, but they need time before you can go up. So I just want to clarify that uh, in terms of the um, IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, the iShares. Now, here's the big thing. If, in fact, any selling is alleviated, uh, maybe by the close in another few minutes, uh, down to down, down 91, S&P is 14, not a big comeback or anything like that. But tomorrow by 9.40 in the morning, there's a sharp sell off, and then all of a sudden you start to repair the damage. What we're going to have to assess is how those key sectors like the BBHs, the pharmaceuticals, the uh, IYC, this to me, these are saying that we are so overbought that we are ready for some kind of a turn down, and that turn down is going to come in the form of, as I said, those three varieties, either a slow rollover or what we've seen today with a deep uh, uh, sell-off tomorrow, two triple-digit uh, down days is what you really need, certainly in the Dow, to get a kickoff to say you've gone from a sell signal to a sell mode almost immediately, that's number one, or... A lot of the damage is going to be done by tomorrow afternoon or early Friday, and now we've got a rectangle formation we can chop around trying to make a new high, taking time, and then sometime next week, oh, I wanted to show this chart. We're just about to wrap up. I found this chart almost by mistake. I did this work. I couldn't even tell you how long ago. It must have been at least a, at least a year ago. You see that blue line? I'm going to just change the color if this time. Let's see. Color, let's go quickly. I'm going to make it. Uh, a bright color. Let's make it white. You see that line there? I cannot see. Am, am I seeing it correctly? Yep. You see that line? That is the expansion, the Fibonacci expansion in time. I forgot all about it. It's the 377. That's what it says. And that comes in when? On the 8th. And I was anticipating that we could actually squeak to Monday or Tuesday before we make it up. We'll see this. This is going to be very exciting. Be careful. Upside's limited. Downside at this point is not. I'll be back tomorrow for my usual show. Stay tuned for Tom O'Brien. It should be a great show with Tom coming up right after this.